no, it, it is it is actually following the line because yeah. you know one one of the things I know we haven't got a lot of time now because because we're, we're running we're running not far beyond the next class, but we can we can oh, do twenty you're minutes. Say, you, you're actually going to tell us something, are you? <laughs> yeah, we 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 are, we are definitely going to do something today. So what the the aim today is is actually uh, looking at how the line can be distorted by modern conceptions. Um, and that that that's what we're going to do today. And there's there's lots of examples of this. You know, it's almost as if we if somebody says this is the way we should see the past. Mm. And th there's there's a great danger in that because there's no photography back then. It, it it's that sort of somebody's har somebody's harboring a view to influence us to understand the past in many ways never happened. So you know, one one of the, the when when we when we do the you know the next class proper, um, and we'll we'll just we'll just run we'll just we'll just run with this I think, and we'll just run into the next class more than anything. Mm -hmm. And this this is sort of an introduction really to the to the next bit of the class. So I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna harbour this in here, and I think the best way to sort of understand what I would like to do to to see how reconstructing the past can have its problems and very much have its problems with how how the line is mutated it's mm. almost as if it's almost as if in some ways that the past the past somebody's gone into a time machine from the past and said this is the this is how the past should be seen when in fact in many ways that the past is to be seen in the past, not the way we see it. So let, let's just let's just try and get some images on here. And R Richard Richard be, would be familiar with what we're what we're looking at in a moment. And we're just going to get straight on what 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 we've got. I devised a lecture yesterday. Right, which is the lecture that we're going to be doing um, later on. Mm -hmm. Right now, if we if we start with this nice image, this is a really nice one. I know Richard has actually already seen this, but what, what, I'm, what I'm going to do is ask a really silly question. Um, I don't want you to tell me where this is, but I want you to tell me what you're looking at and tell me what you're looking at from from an alien point of view. Um, what 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 are you seeing? What 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 um, is on the screen that you're seeing? Not oh. not that you're seeing an illithic, but tell me. There's a photographer because he's got a camera. Yeah. You know that there's two other men. One's got a walking yeah. stick. And they're they're oh actually they're not old. Two one is older yeah. than the others, I think. Sort of yeah, and um they're standing near a wall and behind right. them a, a, a dry stone wall I think yep. and then yep. behind them yep. is a sort of rock uh, shelter okay it's like a it's like a rock shelter it's, it's just uh, this there's a big rock a big plinth and yep. uh, a roof which makes a roof. And and you're being very descriptive. This is what we need, yeah. And there's some uh, a stone wall, like looks like it's made, making a wall for the roof to support the roof. Mm. That's it, really. You know, and he's smiling. Okay. Oh, I don't know what's in the back. Oh, is it? hollow is there like sunlight in the back no yeah yeah you are you are actually seeing you well no there's actually a stone beyond the guy in the middle who's oh actually, there's a stone yeah who, who, who i believe that the guy in the middle is a guy by the name of john ward who was oh. an archaeologist that excavated this site in 1914 right okay john and, yeah, right so one of one of the specific things that I will be thinking about later on, right? And I'm gonna I'm gonna cruise through a load of images, 
and then it's going to be presented um, as the proper lecture after like 10 past seven, right? Um, so all these slides will be familiar to you, but we're going to be doing this in a completely different context. And we're, we're going to be doing the underlying context. So the underlying context is that this site itself is basically, if you look at the map there underneath the sea, it's a, it's a site known as Pinkinswood. Oh. Now, when, when we examined this earlier on, this, this is like 12 o'clock. I I gave us I, I gave the group there was six five of six of us five of us um, the the Barry class there were a couple of people away I, I basically said look um, I I gave us all some facts that we, that we hadn't sort of looked at before um, and I basically said you know the site was looked at in 1807 and when it was looked at in um, then then we had an another little look in um, 1849 and then we had another look um, in 1889 and then the site was excavated in 1914. And throughout that time people have got had this different descriptors of the site and the people who had descriptors of the site uh, were people before 1914 the descriptors of the site were very, very different from what you're seeing with that, because 1914 is the date that this site was excavated and um, in a way reconstructed. Now, the one, the one thing about the one thing about this sort of following the line is to go into the past and then see the past evolu evolving over time. Now, the past is, as I will repeat later on, a place that is not to be seen in distance in time, but distance in travel. Now that is in many ways what Tim Ingold is talking about. Because the line, what happens in the past is inevitably staying in the past, but traveling through time at the same moment, right? So that stone has been there for 6,000 years. It, it, it's a stone that being in the locality for 6,000 years has been touched, has been felt, um, has been looked at, has been discussed. People have um, tried to move it or they may have broken bits off it. But as a monument, that itself echoes the moment that it was actually placed there. So in many ways, that's not traveled in time. It's when you move the stone in the modern era that the timeline has altered. You know, we, we in many ways, lots of, lots of things that lots of people, lots of times when people are talking about time travel, they, they always say that, you know, if you travel into time, you must never alter the timeline. So a good example of this is if, is if, you, if, if you go back in time, right, you turn around and you say to the people, actually build this chamber over there, right? So they never built it here, they built it over there, right? So thinking about that contact, con concept, so what, what I'm trying to say is that we, we must never, if we go back in time, we must never alter what's happened in time. However, when we're reconstructing these monuments and we don't reconstruct them right, we're actually changing the timeline. In other words, we don't need to go 6,000 years to alter time. 
we can alter time in the present by saying that something that we're doing on the site has been like that for 6,000 years, when in fact it truly really hasn't. The past, the past is quite naive and vulnerable. The past only has the voice that we listen to. The past can't stop us doing things to it. And that's what we're talking about. So, Tinkins Wood Burial Chamber, when we see it later, is, is a site that has either been altered in a way that the archaeologists want us to see, or in a way that the archaeologists want us to understand it may have looked like. That's fine. However, this is when looking at the past becomes askew and altered. So if we if we go to this, um, if we go to this. Are you still there, Anne? Yeah. <laughs> right, okay. I brought the box of biscuits in with me. All oh, right, yeah, I, I really appreciate your biscuits. Right. So so this this idea of of time travel, this idea of seeing the past um, in a way that we think the past was played. Right. And Again, I will be talking about stages and performances and interpretation. The, the, the great problem with archaeologists is, is our actions. And what I mean by that is we, we dig out an archaeological site and we create... Um, we create problems and we dig an archaeological site and we create a mound of earth. And that, that, that mound of earth might be seen to be a barrow or that mound of earth might be seen to be the archaeology when in fact it's not, it's being created by the archaeologists. By not telling the public and um, by not helping the public to really understand what's going on uh, when they're seeing an archaeological site um, is really fraught with uh, the sense of getting the interpretation of the past very, very wrong. When, when, we, when we started looking and thinking about Tim Ingold, um, one of the things that Tim Ingold said is that you've got a moment in time and then something else happens and then something else happens as overlap, there's transition, something else happens and then something else happens. And maybe what you might find is that the original monument from the past um, has been altered and changed, right? But unfortunately, there's the idea of going back and saying, this is what the past looked like, which is very, very dangerous. Do you know, I, I've, I've, actually, I've actually wrote a post-it note, right? Uh, and, it, and, it, and it's a book idea, right? And let's just move on a couple of more images. Um, and the book idea, Got a very strange image behind them, and this will this will explain itself later. Um, the book idea is that is that you go back in time, and everything in the book before you go back in time is is the same as what's written in those books when you come back. Got it? So you're a time traveller. So you go back in time. Um, and you change something in time. So say, for example, you change the outcome of the, the Second World War. Adolf Hitler survived, right? And Adolf Hitler, Germany won the Second World War. But the history books in 2023 say that Adolf Hitler didn't win the Second World War. He committed suicide. 
um, in on the 29th of um, no the 30th of April 1945 right but what happened a year later um Germany lost the war Adolf Hitler killed himself but that moment 1946 people decided right what's going to go in the history books is the history books that you see in 2023. When you when you go back to 2023, you think, well, hang on a minute, Germany won the Second World War, Adolf Hitler won the Second World War, right? So what's happened? So then what you do, then you do in 2023, you go back and you actually uncover the truth. He did win the war, but it was a big cover up and he actually eventually lost it. Right. When when you that that helps us in, in many ways understand how you can look at what Tim Ingold is saying, an event in the past, blah, 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 goes into the modern age. Unfortunately, in this modern age, we change the past. And with the two examples, that's inherently wrong. Because again, the past has only got the ability to present the evidence. Now, let's just, let's just show this image. This is completely wrong. This is a lie. This image is completely not what was there 250 years ago. This is the Menantol monument. This is absolute nonsense, right? Now, the only the way we know that this is nonsense is that some of the records from the Menantol monument before it was altered tells us that it didn't look like this, right? But if those records were destroyed, this is how it's always looked. But what I, I've, um, I've I've read a I, I've seen I've seen this in the book many times, and I've read a book about this monument, the Menantol monument, and it says that this is how it's always looked because the author of the book didn't actually go back enough and see. The Menatol Monument never looked like this 250 years ago. Can you see about what I've just said about the time travel thing and the Tim Ingold thing? Right. What we've got to do, I believe we've got to be very true to what the past is telling us. And unfortunately, in many ways, the past has a political <laughs> agenda. Do you know, you know, we, we've we've all sat down ourselves and we've thought, I wish I could have changed that. I wish I didn't do that. I, I wish um, the person um, whose life I'm responsible for ending, right? Um, I wish I could have done something about that. And I'm talking from personal experience. So we, 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 always, we always think, right, that we can go back and change time, but we can't. That person is, is still no longer with us. They're, they're, uh, you know, we, we can't change it. But what the antiquarians are saying, yes, you can. Um, what people are doing when they look at Stonehenge is, yes, you can. Right? Yes, you can um, alter Stonehenge. You're allowed to. Right? Um, and, and I think that power over the past is very, very dangerous. It, it's like it, it, we, we see it every day, for example. We see it every day, uh, you know, you, you could argue that the 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 election um, in two thousand and two thousand and um, it was it was only last two thousand and twenty one when Donald Trump lost the um, U.S. elections, right? Um, did he actually win, or didn't he? Right now, I know you can. I know you could say, yeah, he did lose, right? But I, I was looking at the, I was looking at the television, right? Um, and I was seeing that um, Donald Trump had actually won the state of Georgia. He had actually won the state of Pennsylvania, and he was well ahead, two hundred thousand votes. And then suddenly, every single vote coming in was 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 Democrat, and he then lost the two states. And I'm thinking, is this for real? It, it, am I actually watching this? Is this for real, right? And then Donald Trump comes in. He says, "Actually, this this is this is actually fake. He won the election, right?" Um, so whether he actually won the election or not, that's not the issue. But what we do do, we try and mutate 
um, we try and mutate and alter the reality. And this is what we're talking about, the reality. Remember, in many ways, all that, we, all that we've got in life is the now, is the present, is the current. And we've, we've, got, to, we've got to be very, very wary of that. Oh, and I've, got to, I've, got, I've also got to be very wary that nobody's actually waiting. Um, hang on a minute. Right. So if we stop that a minute, if we stop that. Oh, there's nobody there. Um, uh, mm -hmm. What I'm going to do, Richard, I'm going to give Richard a little bit of control. And if he sees anyone coming on and add them. OK, that would be very helpful. Is Are, are you getting something out of what I'm saying now? Um. Yeah, I, I, well, in fact, one of the phrases that was in this book, it was, um, you know, what are we to do with all this, uh, all these, this knowledge and these feelings and, and all this information and, and, and it kind of, it kind of says, well, you don't do anything, you just experience it, you know, you just experience, you know, it's it's for your experience, yeah. You you just experience it. But of course, if you're um, a historian or an archaeologist who needs to uh, what's the word um, investigate, you know, then you can't just experience. You can, perhaps you can just experience it. Um, but you've also got to try and delve into it a bit further. So um, yeah, I do. I do understand. It's just very difficult, you know. It is very difficult a subject. Yes. Um, so, no, no. It, it, the 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 the, the problem the problem is is that it, it the problem is when when we went to school, right? History was an easy thing. Right, we 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 were told, we were told eggs was eggs and bread is bread. Right, Act, actually, eggs is eggs and bread is bread today. Right, but unfortunately, what we've done, we're starting to see eggs is something else and bread is something else. Right, um, and, yeah. and what 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 I actually what I actually mean by that, uh, what what I actually mean by that is that the danger the danger of today. Is that we've got the internet, right? The, the the danger of today is that we've got the mutation of history, right? We've got the altering of history going on all the time. Mm. Yeah. And uh, what what I'm going to do is this is actually Avery, right? But yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna look at my own actions a minute, which is which is quite responsible. When I took a when I took a, a group of people to Stonehenge, I think we had like um, well, I don't know if you were on that Stonehenge trip, but there was about eighteen of us on the Stonehenge trip, right? And English Heritage said, right, you're an archaeologist, you're not allowed to tell them anything that we don't like, right? Yeah. And I just thought, right, okay, now um, I can look at this in two ways. I did actually tell them that, that um, everybody. Um, because I don't think the we actually had we actually had somebody supervising us for the whole thing, right? We had a security guard supervising us um, um, at the at the beginning um, when we went to the little reconstructed village thing and down at Stonehenge. We had we had somebody we, we had a bod, some kind of bodyguard with us, right? I was saying things that they wouldn't have agreed with. However, right, is that. Is that or a good or a bad thing? And actually, when I look back at my actions, maybe it's a good thing that they wanted to tell us what they wanted to tell us and for me not to disagree with that, right? Because in other words, um, if I want to if I want to disagree and, and not understand or whatever with what they're saying about Stonehenge, right, then I should do it away from Stonehenge. I, I, I should do it away from... I shouldn't try to compete. So I'm as bad as the internet because I'm, I'm competing with everybody else. So, so the physicality um, is the aim of understanding what's there. And, and in many ways, archaeologists have a duty 
to offer us the evidence, not to mutate and alter the evidence. That there's there's too much interference in the understanding and interpretation and offering of the past. Mm. Um, and back back to what back to what Bruegel's harvesters are saying. He's basically saying this is a painting. This is how I feel what's going on is going on, right? You can interpret from what I'm showing you another image of what's going on. But I, I, think, I think what we need to go back to um, is just to basically say, this is this. But unfortunately, the, this image is not this, as we will go on to see as we will go on to say. And I've gone, again, following the line, following the doctrine of the past um, is, is fraught with all the difficulties that the past gives us. We're too connected to the past. We're, 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 all of us are connected to the past. Do you, know, do you know, Anne, I've made some bloody terrible mistakes in my life, right? But I'm not going to be the only one to say that. Um, and again, I would like to change those mistakes. I'm not going to be able to do it. And in fact, it would be irresponsible for, for me to change the past. Okay, okay. Um, let, let's let's not marry, let's not marry Helen and let's not have four children, right? That means that I'm not going to have Bethan in a university meeting somebody else. I'm not going to have Emily wanting want to do her thing. I'm not going to have an actor daughter, right? All for the fact that I stuffed up my marriage. Right, because I was ill and things went wrong. Right, but what I've got is four beautiful children. Right, um, and and having having those four beautiful children. Right, I would never want to change, even though there's lots of things about the past that I would like to change. Right. So, let's just. Um, is anyone else waiting there at this minute, uh, Richard? No. <clears throat> No, I can't see anyone. Right. So, so what we're going to do? What we're going to do? We, we we have we have managed to do. Um, we've actually managed to do nearly. Um, actually, we we thirty five. We've actually managed to do about thirty five minutes. So, what we are going to do? We're gonna we're gonna have a tiny little break yeah. at moment, right? And I'm going to wait for everybody else to come and join us. So, oh. what? I thought I saw someone on your phone. A picture. My phone. Mm. No, it's all right. Oh yeah. Well, who, who's this? Goff. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. All right, then. Well, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna wait a moment. You want to start a break? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna. We'll, we'll, have, we'll have a tiny little break. I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna try and find out where 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 the other two are. So. Uh, oh, wow! Well, it's it's early yet. Oh no! Yeah, wow. Well, oh. You've been watched. Quarter past. Quarter past. Oh, well, yeah. well, we we we're gonna we're gonna we're oh, waiting for the yeah, French. Mary, Henry going somewhere. We wait. We wait for the Frenchman. I'll just write to him, Henry. Didn't you say he was not coming this week? Oh, I don't know. No, he's not. We'll give him a moment. Well, anyway, go and see this exhibition in chapter. It really um, you you'll be surprised. <laughs> You'll be kind of. <laughs> and you've lost us already. I know, I know. It's just, it's just um, the man on the counter, you know, he was trying to explain to us, that basically, this guy who, who wrote it, who, who did this exhibition, he's only 27. He's Scottish. He's 107? Flipping out, that's old, isn't it? No, he's only twenty-seven, and um, he's he's done this. He's been collecting things all his life. Well, of course, my daughter was. Hang like, on a minute. He's twenty-seven. He's been collecting things all his life. It's hardly long. <laughs> no, um, 
you know, the things that he was collecting, he's made art out of, you know, and he's drawn oh. a lot and things. And it's just, uh, yeah, it's, I don't know. It's, it's one of those things like the line when you think, what's it all about? <laughs> <laughs> Right, on What's that it note, all about? Right, Anne, you've done my edging already. We're starting. Right, so um, and uh, otherwise, Goff, otherwise Goff will get angry with us, and we don't want an angry Goff. Right, so it's um, it's seven seventeen. I think there's a pop group there, isn't there? Heaven seventeen or seventeen. Rich, Richard's a massive fan of Evan seventeen. Right, so what we're going to do, Richard, you're going to have to look to. Look out to see if the other two join us. But yeah, okay. I, I'm I'm going to I'm going to start with saying that today we're we're looking at uh, a very a very different side to to the past and history, right? So so that's that's what we're going to do. We're we're just before Christmas we we had a lecture that looked at sites that had been reconstructed within the Neolithic context that altered how the ne how Neolithic sites are to be seen in the modern day and age. Now last week we looked at the 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 barrow um the antiquarian barrow diggers. Before that we looked at the site of um Arbalo in Derbyshire. And then before that, we looked at the barrow diggers, and obviously before that, we, we looked at this reconstruction thing. Um, now, the perception and how the past is to be seen in a Neolithic context is where exactly we're going to be going today. So we, we visit, uh, that would be very familiar to Richard, and the site that we've just had a brief discussion about um, uh, with Anne, um, and Henry's just joined us. And we we're going to uh, we're, we're gonna we're gonna crack on, and we're gonna look at some images straight away. And it's good of you to join us, Henri. Uh, we we are, we've been waiting here for four hours for you. Oh, Henry will go to the exhibition. Hang on. You can, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get to this first image and then we've got lots of images to go through tonight. And as you can see, um, there's a number of sites that we're going to be looking at. Right. And so good old map of good old Wales. And what we're going to be looking at. Right. Is a site. Which is just south of sea. Um, in the word Cardiff. And this is the site that we're going to look at first. But before we actually do that, I want to see if there's any interesting news from anybody, right? Because, we, you know, let's see if there's any interesting news. So, OK, let's see first. Is there any interesting news from you, Anne, other than washing machines? Um, no, no that, um... That, that, that's good. That's good. Uh, what about what about you, Richard? Anything you'd like to tell us, Richard, um, other than the world's going to end tomorrow? No, nothing, nothing new. Nothing okay. new, nothing old. You know what I what I'd hope what I should have done, I, I shouldn't have gone for these lemon drizzle slices. I wish I'd have gone for the other things. Uh, Goff, any news this week on the archaeological world? Yes, I am. Um, I'm trying to get the ticket to uh, see the lecture that uh, Professor Jones is going to give on the Newport ship oh. online. Oh yeah. Of February. Ah. But yeah. uh, all the tickets are sold out, so I'm on the waiting list. So, oh, oh god. god, yeah. Oh, you got. It's not going to be. Oh, it's online. All right. Oh, I can see it. Oh, I can see it. Um, why? Why is it online? Why can't people just meet in person? This this COVID <laughs> nonsense is over. It's. I think it's probably because it's, you get more people with uh, more money. Um, yeah. to watch it online. Oh, I don't know where he hold it. Um, yeah. So now they, they're going to try and start putting it together, apparently. But well, this is what it's all about. Uh, um, yeah. It's been 
news and they're making a big effort now, I think. Uh, Carl mm-hmm. probably know more about it than me, but um, uh, this this guy, Joe, Joe, I'm not sure his first name, but he's the, he's a, he's the guy that's leading the... John. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, anyway, yeah. So if you want to put your name on the list, yeah. wait to see if someone pulls out. Right. Okay. How really <laughs> uh, much are the tickets? Uh, they're about uh, 20 quid, I think. 20? Oh, well, oh, well I suppose it's a good cause, isn't it? You know, well, I mean, very interesting. it'll go towards the I'm, Newport ship. I mean, I'm giving Carl 50 quid for six weeks. So 20 <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. okay, okay. Let, let's just let's just let's just move on, right? Uh, anyway, thanks thanks for that, uh, Guff. So the other the other thing I'd like we'd like to know now is anything you'd like to say, Henry? Hello, this is Hello, Wick, Henry. Uh, Henry, Henry, this we're listening. Wick, we, we, we are you. We've got somebody else here. Oh, I did, I, I did guys, you right? uh, Oh. I sent you an item last week. Yes, and, and I did thoroughly enjoy the item last week, which I'm going to read out. The other guy, the other guy who's joined us is, is one of my dodgy number from a Tuesday evening. He's called Adam. Hello, Adam. Hello there. <laughs> um, he, he's, he's, he's basically related to the ants. <laughs> right, so th- this, is, this is from last week. Archeolo- we won't ask Hi, if Adam. Adam's got any news because you, you'll get confused by right. archaeological excavation report now this is a rather interesting one this actually takes us to ireland and you know we we, we need to, we need to look a little bit more about um sites in ireland um and this base, base, basically it's a really nice little story it's a neolithic house and an early bronze age pit um so various phases of archaeological activity are recorded at the site an early phase a neolithic house um associated with the features and then we've got um a bronze age pit so this neolithic stuff it looks like it, we're going back to about five and a half thousand years ago or somewhere like that um and then there's another phase of activity at the site um which is um uh, probably from about the 16 1700s so it's, it's quite interesting that we've got a site that's principally neolithic then it's bronze age and then there's a big gap and we've got post medieval um activity um and where we're going back to this is actually um it's, it's got some really nice radiocarbon dates uh which which i want to come back to again but but there is just just a little thing that there is a lot going on and we're finding a lot more earlier act- activity in ireland and uh mm. looking at some of the early neolithic dates we're going back to uh six thousand years ago um at two sites at um Bar-Nagor, and um, Gortor um, in in um, in Ireland. So we'll come back to that again. So what we're going to do, without further ado, anyway. Um, oh, Adam, go and say hello to everybody. Otherwise, no, they're not going to know who you are. Oh yeah, um, I'm a history student. Um, uh, I saw Carl um, in through Britain's Hidden History. So I've just got a general uh, wide interest in history. I'm, I'm new to archaeology, so I'm just here for. Uh, Learning that side of things. All right. Good. Well, oh. And and and, and you're, you're very very welcome. He's he's one of, he's one of the sensible people from a Tuesday evening. Oh dear. Um, <laughs> now they're, all, they're they're all very sensible on things Tuesday. Things are going downhill from the here on now. Oh uh, yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. Bill didn't want to join us tonight because um, Anne started talking about a uh, washing machine. <laughs> Which which isn't actually too far away. So what we're going to do, I want us to chuck on some images, um, and this is where we're going to go. And we will start with uh, when I, when I get my images up. Uh, we'll start with why is Ken Bruce leaving the BBC? Right, no, we won't do that. Right, so I want us to the scene. We're going to be looking at how how the Neolithic period. And our perception of the Neolithic period has been altered and distorted by how archaeological old. sites have been excavated. That by shows how, you how old the M4 motorway is. Sorry, <laughs> Henry. <laughs> no, shut up. <laughs> That's not years old, old the... and they haven't improved it. No, yes, yeah, shut up. 
shut up. You don't usually do jokes. Now shut up. <laughs> right. So, so the one the one thing that we do have is a perception of the past by the sites that have been excavated, and how the evidence is presented. Now, I I've been to a number, quite a number of prehistoric sites and quite a number of Neolithic sites in my lifetime. And one site that is really, really well presented is the site of um, Scara Bray. I've been to Scara Bray probably about, about eight times. And, you know, you're looking at Scara Bray and it's basically more or less as it was excavated. However, there's been some changes that occurred to Scara Bray um, by the original excavator, a, um, uh, uh, Dr. Child in the 1920s, 1930s, but that's another thing altogether. But other than that, Scarabra is, is very much as we see. So the site we're going to look at is a site known as um, Tinkins Wood. Tinkers Wood, St. Nicholas Burial Chamber, and there it is. This is how the plan of the site looks today. Now, the one thing, the plan looks really, really nice. It, it looks how we think the site um, looked and how it looks today and everything's hunky and hunky dory right but one clue to this not being as it was is the way the front is arranged now obviously behind you've got the chamber um this little rectangular boxing that is the chamber and we can later on refer to it as a burial chamber, but obviously its primary loose use was probably something other than a burial chamber for its first hundreds, if not a thousand years before it was actually used as a burial chamber. And that hole there, that, that other little box there indicated is, is an odd thing indeed, right? And the reason why that's odd indeed is that was the earliest level of evidence at the site, and some say actually later evidence. However, we're not really interested in dates and so on today. We're, we're really interested in how the site is presented. Now, you can see that there's, this, there's no real symmetry between the left and the right-hand side of those things that jut out in front of the chamber. So um, where you've got the arrow, the north arrow, right? you've got what would be re commonly referred to as a forecourt or a court. Um, or, or an area, um, they're, they're referred to as, as the bullhorns of Tinkins of a Barrow Chamber. But the one on the, the one um, which, um, the one on the northern side is slightly linear than the one on the south side. And they are actually, they are actually um, not the way not the evidence that was actually found on the site, but how the archaeologists presented it. They did it in a rather interesting way. Um, and Henry's, right, um, can one of you look out for Henry, please? Um, Richard, Henry's got to go off and come back on. Hang on, he's, he's just texted me. Henry, hi. Um, go out and uh, this is, and back on. Sorry about this. Text if you can't get on. Sorry. Right. OK. So what we need to do then is we need to look at this image. It's 1914. And this stack, this pillar, is actually to be seen at, at Tink Tinkinswood Burial Chamber. And this stack is to actually support the nearly 50 ton stone above it. And there's a date on it saying 1914. And it says excavated 1914. And why has the archaeologist done that? Why has he actually put excavated 1914 on it? And the reason why he's done that is he wants you to know. Uh, by the way, Henry's waiting. So, so can somebody let him on? Um, he, he wants you to know that he put that there. It's not part of the original archaeology. Has somebody, has somebody put Henry back on? Oh, okay, I'll get Sorry, Henry on. Sorry, Carl, I just muted. Have you put him on? Back on. Oh. Yeah, back on. Thank yeah. you for that, Richard. Yeah, right. I'm back. If that happens again, just text me, okay? So, okay. so 
so he wanted us to know that he was responsible for this. Now that is responsible in itself because when we looked at Newgrange and we've looked at Newgrange in Ireland in the past, most of what you see at Newgrange has completely been reconstructed. But we're told that that's how, the, that's how Newgrange looked, which is absolute nonsense. Um, and this itself. Now, earlier on, I had the group, a little group, and we were discussing how, how the past is to be seen and how the past is presented. Um, and this capstone itself is maybe the way it has always looked. But I'm not completely sure about that. It may have actually been slightly altered after the excavations or there's been subsidence and it's moved. There's discussion about that. Those guys in front, uh, part of the team that excavated the site in, in 1914. And that guy in the middle is actually the archaeologist John Ward. Now, John Ward is responsible for the excavations of a number of archaeological sites, including the site of Casteth Moor Grig, which is a site which is near Caerphilly. And there's a big debate over what Casteth Moor Grig is about. John Ward is sceptical whether the site is actually Norman built or is actually native built. But obviously within his excavations, he excavated the site and then we don't really know what's going on. Now, that, that, was, over, that was over 100 years ago. But back to this site and back to the question at hand, what we can actually see is rather interesting. Um, and what is interesting is the way the stones are organized to the right hand side of that gentleman that's got the coat hanging over his arm. Now, on the right hand side, if you look above that, the coping stones, that's not original. John Ward decided that when he was presenting the site, he was to give us an opportunity to understand how the site looked at the time of excavation and how he thinks the site looks. So, so far, that there on the northern side, that wall there on the northern side is partly the way it originally looked, right? But the wall on the south hand side will come apparent that there's something really not quite right with it. Now, I've mentioned this, and not to sound like a gramophone, but in it back in the day, and, I, and some of you have already heard this, but this is really relevant to understand what that diagonal stone means so if we move on a little bit right you can clearly see there that that is all diagonal on the left hand side and you can actually see horizontal stuff um, on the right hand side which is original you can't see the coping stones on there yet either because they've been added right now what John Ward did he basically said that it may have looked like this on the left, but I'm not sure. So I'll reconstruct it in a way that you can decide whether it's genuine or not, right? Um, and Henry's can't tell me again. So um, if one of you can keep looking out for Henry, because I'm never going to get through this otherwise, um, just try again. Okay. I'll keep an eye out for him, Carl. Yeah, keep him, keep an eye out for him. So that that diagonal there, what John Ward is saying, he's saying, look, I don't know if it looked like this, but I'm giving you an opportunity to try to see the past in a way that you want to see it. Right now, that's responsible. He's not he's not what he's not doing. If we go back to the original plan. What John Ward isn't saying is that the, the, wall in, the wall in the north and the wall in the south of that sort of courtyard or area, he's not saying that that definitely looked like that. 
so what he's done is the south bit of the wall he's done in herringbone to basically say maybe it had a curve or maybe it looked like the north wall you know because part of the north wall is also reconstructed in herringbone i think that's very responsible but there were mistakes made with what we're seeing at this site at tinkinswood and what we're, one mistake is is that up until about i can't remember when it was up until about 40 years ago there were trees on the grass growing out the grass right so what 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 the ministry of work said not Cadu back then was that well, what we've got to do we've got to cut the trees down right but you can clearly see in the background is were some of these trees in the background actually on top of the burial chamber um when they were excavating anyway so so this tree thing it's a bit of a red herring definitely but what i like to see is to be give the, given the opportunity to try to understand the past in a manner that's a fitting to that's fitting to my intellect now this stone is really really interesting now this is very interesting because this is actually known as the stanton stone uh, this is actually a this is actually a, a burial chamber but if you can see the top the capstone is still it is is on is lying on the ground and guess what it's still like that today so and you know what we were saying in the earlier class we, we, we said about we said about well what we want to see is how this looked and how this is decayed not how we have altered it right so i'm happy with seeing that but the general tourist the general members of the public don't get an opportunity to see this which for me is a great shame because it offers contrast in a site that's been partially reconstructed and a site that's not been reconstructed at all now i'm not going to say for one moment that the capstone's been placed back on there right it may have slipped a little bit but it's always looked like that right now one of one of the things that i realized earlier on was something that i was reading and i said to my i said to my class on a wednesday morning i actually said well what i've just realized is that if you look at the chamber there the the rectangular box on the right hand side you can see um you can see four stones, can't you? In black, they're four stones in black, right? And every reconstruction says that there were stones on the other side, on the south side, right? I don't think there ever was. And the reason why I don't think there ever was, was if you look at that capstone there, that stone itself, a big chunk of stone is missing, which would have inevitably made this stone 50 tons plus in weight that stone is missing because it's never been held up by anything vis-a-vis -vis, when you look at reconstructions of the site they are wrong and also when you look at reconstructions of the site you also see earth on top of this that's also wrong because what we are now actually starting to realize is that most of these stones were never ever covered in earth they were not meant to be covered in earth because these people, I, I, I can tell you quite plainly and quite as plain as day, these people, even though you've got a chamber, right, in some ways being covered in earth means something else, which is another talk. However, when you go to the giant's grave on the Gower at the Ronda Heather Heritage Park, what you see at the giant's grave is that there's no capstone, but they've done a reconstruction with a capstone on it. Well, it, it's not possible because you can't, you wouldn't be a, you know, the, the stones would be so low, you would struggle to get in there, right? And the now archaeologists are actually arguing that there was never a capstone on it anyway. Thank you very much, Mother of God. So, and the reason why this ties in with something else, right? Again, the perspective of the past. This ties in with when you look, for example, at some of the sites on Orkney, you know that human remains have been exposed in what we would call sky burial. So 
So I, I, I actually think this is a nice way of this is a nice way of decaying, right? And I, I, I've actually had talks with people recently, and they thought, okay, now he's odd, right? Mind my French. And I've basically said, well, what's wrong with with dying and having your body um, stretched out um, on on a platform, allowing birds to pick it, pick out your eyes and allow birds to pick out the flesh? And then six months later, members of the family come along, pick up your long bones and bits of your skull, collect them together and put them in the ground. What's wrong with that? I think that's that's a perfectly nice way to go. At least I'll be looking up at the sky. I don't want to be buried. Uh, that, 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 that's, my, that's my biggest nightmare, to be buried. I don't want to be buried. I really don't. I don't want an arsehole archaeologist to excavate, excavate me because that's what most of us are. We've got no respect for human remains. Uh, we, we, we dig out human remains, right? And, and we, we put them in boxes in museums and we think, oh, we are better than the people who actually buried these, these sets of human remains. Oh, and I'll tell you some, an announcement that I made this morning. Um, when, when the council gave permission to destroy the archaeology at Five Mile Lane on the A4226, and I then said, why are they putting drainage in, um, you know, across a 200 metre stretch of road? It's only turning out that I was right that it's going to it's going to be built on. Uh, when they lied and they said it wasn't going to be built on, they just they just moved everything on the field because they 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 needed to do groundworks right for the road which was only ten meters wide and they cleared an area which is two hundred meters wide because they're actually putting solar panels on that landscape right um, and the the reason why I've mentioned that not as a political message but to to basically say that archaeologists lie, you know, we 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 went we went a, along uh, with the narrative, uh, and we dug up all those bodies and we put them in boxes for no reason at all. Uh, and by the way, Henry's got back in touch. He he said, "I I will go away for a while as drops out is very few seconds." Well, um, um, wonderful, um, Richard, um, keep looking out for Henry. Anyway, back back to this monument. We're looking at this within within years of the site being excavated, right? Um, so you might think that it didn't look, it wouldn't have, other than the stuff on on the left hand side, it, it may have been that um, this is how the site may have looked. You know, there was no earth on top of it. This is how the site may have looked. But there's one problem with that: that bank of stones in front. That's that's very very friable um, it looks as if it needs soil to protect it because it'll collapse um, and that is that is supported um, and kept in place today so that means that uh, that stonework in front the one directly in front is probably not to be seen like that so in other words if that's the case folks this reconstruction in the front is completely wrong because it's very likely that lots of this was actually full of earth because there's no way would that wall that I've just pointed out be able to support itself. Because if you go there, it doesn't look very um, safe. It doesn't look, it, it's only, it's not, it's not a meter high, but it, it doesn't actually look as if it, it can actually support itself. There is, there are, there are lots of other interesting things is the way they've actually reconstructed this. Because at the back, it may have actually been that the back was actually curved rather than rectilinear. We haven't done that little hole there um, that looks like a little eye. We, we haven't actually done that yet. And we're going to actually come on to that in a short while. So, again, again, going back to this, what we also know is that that, that hole there was accessed or maybe the side was accessed can't really say that hole itself was accessed and used as an entrance to whatever this building was used initially and for burial this was accessed from 6,000 years ago to approximately um, six or seven hundred years ago right Henry's back on try and um, add him on and and this this was an access into a place that people would take flowers, 
they 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 would take pottery uh they they we, we know that because we've actually found medieval pottery in there and roman pottery and iron age pottery and bronze age pottery and bones from the neolithic and it the other the other very strange point is and i found only found this out today it it was it was a work that we were reading out from 1889 and it was Marianne Spencer, God, I've forgotten the rest of her name, Marianne Spencer, um, Richardson, I think, and, and, and her book basically said that, that in the past, people were able to go in here before 1849 and there were, there were bones, there, there were human bones just lying on the surface, meaning that people respected what was in here. And that is a really, really interesting piece of research work because um, the historian went in there in 1849 and he, and he said he, he picked up um, um, part of a human skull, lower mandible, picked up a part of the human skull. And it was just like, because it was lying on the surface. And that's amazing. Because it, it tells us that people are actually just left there as it was for thousands of years. And I think that's that's absolutely amazing. Um, but it's not as amazing as it sounds because I've I've been to I've been to Cyprus on a number of occasions, as you know. And I went to a museum called the Ethnographical Museum. Right. Um, and when I went to the ethnographical museum, uh, the 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 curator said, "Oh, um, there's a tomb around the back, right? You can go in there, right? And the artifacts and the skeletal remains are still there." And I thought, "Rubbish." So I, I went in there. He was right. There were human bones there, right? And there was artifacts still there as they were excavated. And I thought that's absolutely amazing. So this is why I've got this thing in my mind that when you excavate an archaeological site, um, you, you should record the human remains and you should leave the artifacts with them. You shouldn't take these artifacts and put them in museums. I think they believe I, I think they belong on the ground. I'm sorry to say that, but um, that's how I've been educated. And that's how I've been educated to think. That's the way it is. Um, you know, people say, oh, you know, we should put these things in a museum where they're safe. Well, they should be safe anyway. We shouldn't be metal detecting them. We shouldn't be looting these sites. I know metal detecting is right in the right place. You can metal detect on the beach and that's fine. That's OK. Got no problem with that. Um, but then again, archaeologists are as bad as me ever being critical of metal detect enthusiasts because um, we nick things from bodies. It's theft. And, and, and back to the issue of reconstructing the past, how do we see the pa past there for? Do we see the past in the moment of excavation? Now, this is what the Chinese believe, actually. And this is what some Greek archaeologists believe. So if you go to the site of Santorini, right, you, you, you actually see the pottery where it was found. There, there's a hanger over it, right, but the pottery is still there. You can see sort of amphora over there, and it's just like still there. Stuff broken on the ground, it's still there, right? That 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 is, in a way, how the past has been excavated, and how the archaeologists saw it. So we've got a mind to open and understand that that what the past was about. So. What you're looking at is the big stone there, and you can see that bit broken off at the back there. You, you can you can understand what I'm saying, right? Now that capstone actually comes from um, comes from over here. So that capstone comes from over here. There's a quarry, right? And that stone on the left, on the right there, you can just see a little bit of a shadow of a stone. That's the that's the other burial chamber, the one that we just saw collapsed. Now. If you flew over this, now this is this is uh, taken by Toby Driver, the Royal Commission on Ancient Stock Monuments, Povline, and it, it, it's like, well, okay, what are we seeing? 
okay, we're seeing there's actually tree stumps there. So they cut down the trees. We've got the capstone. We've got what, what the archaeologist Jay Ward wanted us to maybe entertain in our heads, whether it looked like that or not. Well, I'm okay with that. But that there is where we've got the problem. That, that hole in the ground and the stone. And why have we got a problem with that? Well, it's not very difficult. It's not, it's not rocket science. Because, hang on, if, you, if, you, if we go back there, it's almost as if we, we always believed it looked like that. But some of those stones there are actually from inside the burial chamber, the, the, the big capstone from that area. So they've been taken from that and moved over there. For me, for me, that gives the wrong demonstration and impression of the Neolithic past. And for me, they're, they're, that's the danger with, with how the past is actually presented for us all. Mm -hmm. Do you know, I'm not, you know, I, I'm, you know, um, okay, um, I go along with a girlfriend um, and, um, okay, um, I, I, I go along with a girlfriend and, and we look at the past and we say, oh, that's, that's wow, it's brilliant. That's the way it's meant to be, look, that's the way it's meant to look like, right? Um, and, and then we think, well, think of Cosmeston Medieval Village, right? Ever, if anyone's ever been to Cosmeston Medieval Village, mm -hmm. it's completely and utterly wrong. It's a, it, it's, it's a hundred percent wrong, right? That's a slight exaggeration. I was a I was a volunteer archaeologist on it, right? Um, and when they were originally going to start building the buildings that cost most of medieval village in 1984, they basically said, right, we got we got six we got five or six layers of stone, and then we've got um, a timber frame, we have got a crook frame, which is with roofing timbers, right? Um, and then the roofing timbers will give the height inside the building, and then that'll be the thatch and all the rest of it. And a council turned around and said, can't do that. Um, you can't have semi-timber walls. You've got to have solid stone walls, and then you can put your roof on. And we said, oh, but th that didn't happen in Wales. Uh, that's what's going to happen for insurance reasons, health and safety. Yeah, but that's not right. It's tough. You either reconstruct the buildings based on the village in France, or you don't reconstruct the buildings at all. So when people, when people go to Cosmas Medieval Village, they film, they film movies there. They, 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 they have wedding photographs there. They take school parties there. They tell people this is how the medieval period looked. It never looked like that, that at all. It's a, it's a lie. Mm. That, even, that... Hang on a minute, even to the detail that when we were building the roofs, we didn't research what material to build the roofs out of. We used pine. And within five or six years, one of the roofs was collapsing because we didn't use the right materials. So we started using the right materials. But the point is, if you're going to reconstruct the past, get the bloody thing right, for God's sake. Anne. Well, the bird's eye view of um, Tinkins Wood, uh, I've never seen that before. And uh, I, I feel as though they've used, um, they've tried to make it look tidy, you know, and, and they've, um, like New Grange, you know, they, they want it to look uh a certain shape, you know. I I don't know if it is real. No, no, I, it's not real. It's hmm? not real. I've, I've I've already answered it. It's not real. No. But the, the 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 northern part of that, the front, is not, not real. But 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 hang on a minute, Anne. Right, uh, we're going back to Jay Ward. He gave you he gave you a chance to try to understand it. He's not saying it is real because what he's done, he's indicated clearly what is reconstructed archaeology and what's not. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's fair. At Cosmest in Medieval Village, they tell you that that's how the past looked. Right. Which is wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So okay, that looks good. Okay, it'd be nice to have an earthen bank along that because that that would give it more support. Right. You're now looking into the angle, and 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 basically that there is the pillar that was put in to give extra support for the roof. That's fine. Okay, that is okay. However. Now we're starting to get to the nitty gritty. Can you see, right, what John Ward could have done 
on the on the northern side of this, he could have said, right, it all looked like the stuff on the left. Right. It all looked like the stuff on the left. But he didn't. He even went down to ground level and said it may have looked it may have come out here. Right. It may have done this, but he didn't want to lie to us. Um, and on the left hand side, look at all that. It's all herringbone. So there is a chance that neither the stuff on the left or the right ever really existed like that at all. And there's also the idea of anti-symmetry, right? Um, man, and maybe you should have spotted it as uh, an artist, right? Um, but that's not symmetrical, right? But there is symmetrical in the way that the front. Mm -hmm. what, what Jay Ward was saying, maybe it should be symmetrical. Mm. But he was actually hedging his bets and saying, actually, it might not be symmetrical. Mm. And, and that's a really interesting admission. Because for me, uh, we always think, because in, in our modern day in life, everything's symmetrical, isn't it? You look at a car, there's a, there's a, the left and the right headlamp is symmetrical, right? Our faces, our faces are symmetrical. Butterfly wings are symmetrical, right? Um, you know, you know, there, there's all this sort of symmetry, right? However, folks, the past doesn't need to be symmetrical. And the mm. idea of the straight, the idea of the straight line is a modern concept. Mm. And and you know when we when we do this when we do follow the line everyone when they come into that and they think about the line they think the line is straight mm. a line could be twent, yeah. uh, bent it can be twisted um, it yeah. can be zigzaggy right yeah. um, so so you mm -hmm. know uh, by the way Henry's going away and he's going to come back on so um, just just keep <laughs> looking out for him so what I'm going to say is I'm going to say um, join join us on YouTube job done. That's it. He's going to join us. Well, I, I thought that, oh. uh, you know, if it was like um, a mound, if it had a mound over it. Um, does it need to be symmetrical? That's what you're saying. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't really need to be symmetrical. No, but uh, it probably would be more symmetrical. That's why I think these are not real. No, I, I just think it's it's sort of. Giving an idea that there would might have been something over over the top of it, you know, soil over it or something, or a mound. Yes, it 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 is, but there is one other point that I have to make, which I've not made before. Um, and the this point here is something that I've never actually realised, and I've actually just realised it now. Right. So if we if we actually go if we actually go back to this size, right. Hang on, not that one. There. It's always been said that that there is the entrance way into the chamber. That hole there. Mm. Well, if the stone there's there's that that's there's a bit of stone overhanging. It would doesn't take a genius to maybe work out that that may have been one complete stone, and therefore the actual way to get in was actually through the side on the left there, where the pillar is. Mm. That makes perfect sense to me, that, mm. that there was this big entrance, and there was this big sort of thing on the, on the left-hand side mm. you could actually go into. Why do you need to make life difficult for yourself and just sort of... The other thing as well is, is it's been suggested, actually, that um, it's been suggested that the, the, the stones... Um, the stones on the south side there were actually quarried quarried away right well why didn't you just take the capstone off the top mm. do you know do you know, do you know what i'm trying to say if you mm. if you take the stones off the side right you risk having the capstone falling down on you so you just break off the top yeah that makes perfect sense oh and whilst you're at it right take all the other stones around the side and then break up the other stones so I don't think there was any stones on the south side at all. It makes absolutely no logical sense. Now, what we're going to go on to, we're going to remind us of that that little eye thing there, right, is where we're going to go next because we're going to go to there.
Now, this is that little eye. Those stones there, when I, when I was a little child, I used to, when, when I say little child, when I was like 12, 13 or whatever, I, I could never work out why those stones were there. It just didn't make sense because nobody told anyone why they were there. I thought that they had always been there. I, I actually thought that they had been there since for thousands of years, those stones there on the top, right? But then you go, then you read, and it basically says, oh, a few stones were taken out of a hole. Well, that's them. That's those stones. <laughs> there they are, right? And they, some of them actually came out of the burial chamber, right? Yeah. They were taken out the main burial chamber. So that, for me, has distorted the past completely, right? No, I, I was sat down the other day. What I could do is get an aqua prop, and I could what I could do is actually place them back in the hole, right? But unfortunately, now the, the way those stones are arranged, right, I would be committing a, a criminal offence, mm. even though in 1914 they were never there. But because they are now positioned there, they are now part of the ancient monument. So you'd need permission of the Secretary of State for Wales to actually move them. <laughs> So, in, in, other, in other words, what we're saying, Anne, is that the past itself is irreversible. Mm -hmm. when, when, you've, when you've actually created, it's basically like saying, it's like basically saying, oh, what I'm going to do, right, is I'm going to have a sex change, and now it's irreversible. Well, mm -hmm. you know, if you're a woman and you have your breast taken off, you're not going to get those breasts back. If you're a man and you have your willy taken off, you're not going to get your willy back, right? So that's irreversible. It's actually part of the monument. It's actually part of you. And this is exactly the way that you actually see archaeology in history. This has distorted our perception of the site. It's altered our perception of the site. Yeah. I don't know if any of you have actually been with me to Kaya, Kaya Kalian. And uh, I get very excited and I run around and I tell you everything at Kalian. And I take you to the back of the amphitheatre and I show you a load of stones. Mm. And I basically go, I point over and say, those stones there are part of the original arch from the amphitheatre. Mm. And they were put there, I believe, that they were going to be put, they were going to be used to reconstruct an arch, which would mean it would be one of the only Roman arches standing in Britain, it'd be reconstructed, but it would have been friggin' spectacular. But nobody can touch those stones now. They actually positioned on the scheduled ancient monument and they can't be moved. Yeah. People go over there and say, oh my God, this is where there was a Roman arch. No, it wasn't here. It was actually in the amphitheater. That's where it was. That's where it was. So what we're going to do, we're going to look at another site now. And, and on Tuesday, the, the lecture on Tuesday went on for three hours. We're not going to do three hours today. But one thing that I, I did say uh, is that I don't want you to go away from this presentation today thinking that the past is a lie. I've actually said that some of the past is real. But, but you've always got to question it. Back, back to that image quickly, right? Jay Ward, who had actually excavated those big stones out of that hole in the chamber, probably left them there temporarily. Unfortunately, a war got in the way. The First World War, Great War, mm. I think there was more important things to get on with. So those stones were left like that, and they've been left like that since 1914. So oh. we're going to look at, the next site we're going to look at is this site called Men Nantol, Menantol, the Menantol Monument. And there, it, sorry guys, if, 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 if I'm going to be a bit dispiriting, Neolithic Monument, superb, absolute works, right? It's one of the most disappointing archaeological monuments I've ever seen in my life. It, it, it is wrong. They've reconstructed it wrong. They've moved the stones around. They completely distorted it. They've maimed it. They've destroyed it. They've, they've wrecked it. I, you know, I, I felt so angry when I went there, right? And why? Well, I'll tell you bloody why now. 
Right, so if you went to the Tregaseal Stone Circle, fine, great. There's half a dozen other stone circles in and around the Penzance area, including um, Mine Maidens, right? And another, um, and some really nice stone circle sites, right? But then what you then go to is, voila! There's, I tell you what, right? I don't know if you, I, I actually thought, well, I thought that was a massive frigging hole. But I thought you could get an elephant through it, right? I was looking at illustrations in books, and the book said that this Menatol monument has always looked like this, right? It's always looked like this. In fact, no, it hasn't. In fact, 200, 250 years ago, it looked completely different. Now, I, I, I decide I made I made the conscious decision on Tuesday. I, I said, right, I, I don't want people coming away from this presentation on Tuesday without a little bit of history and archaeology. So this is the bit of history and archaeology that I pick upon, right? So get away my anger, right? Let's just look through that stone. Neolithic monuments, Neolithic, really screwed up, close brackets, monument known as Menatol, the whole stone or the Crick stone, with three standing stones and one now lying down a recumbent stone, dating back to approximately um, over 5,000 years ago. So it's Neolithic going into the Bronze Age. Fine. And now we get into the lie. I got to I got to bite my finger now and try to do this without any, with without losing the plot. This alignment of stones lies on a moorland footpath. That's not true. It never aligned like this. 250 years ago, it never looked like this at all. It's a lie. It's, it's not an alignment of stones at all. It's a, it's a complete made up thing. It, there were three existing stones as part of a stone circle. They altered them because what, what they thought, right? What they thought, they thought um, what you need to do is as you look through the hole, you can see the other stone directly and the other stone lines up with the other the line of sight directly through the stone. And therefore, um, it's a sign of fertility. OK, let's be crude. It's a penis entering a vagina. This is what um, antiquarians wanted you to see. But this is wrong. It never looked like this. It never looked like this at all. So the central of the crick stone is, is big enough to actually climb through. Um, and <laughs> the clue to what's going on with this site is that all the other stones from the site were quarried out and removed. Now, for building, right? And, and okay, we're getting some evidence. So, oh, hang on a minute, the, the stones from a stone circle. Now, oh, hang on a minute, that's a, that's a giveaway clue. These, are, these three are aligned. There's a bit of a clue there. Right. So the three standing stones are no more than 1.2 meters high. So when I went to that, when I thought, well, I, I didn't actually read the height. I actually thought these things were like two meters in height. I, I knew I knew about the faking of the site. Right. But I actually thought that, the, that these would be huge things. Right. And they weren't. Now. If we go, the clue is with this plan. Can you see that stone? Um, that stone on the left-hand side, right, forget about the three upright stones there. That stone on the left-hand side is recumbent. It's lying flat. That one alongside is upright. That one was is the crick stone with the whole stone. And the one on the right, and that foam forms an arc. <coughs> right, that's how it looked in the 1800s. It formed an arc. You can see the arc, right? So why is it in alignment now? Um, the, so in other words, so never eat shredded wheat right so the western stone which is stone b on the plan the western stone stone b right um was was moved in a southerly direction to a line up with the hole and the hole was slightly realigned on the other stone so there were two stones were completely moved and that really angers me it really, really does. Um, and it says over the last 200 years of or so, antiquaries have pondered 
and been rather puzzled as to whether these standing stones once formed a much larger stone circle. Yeah, that's because it bloody did. And the other stones were removed before 1800. You can wonder as much as you like, but it never, ever looked like this. So, you know, I do like putting my passion into something like this, but I, 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 okay, I lie to people. We all lie to people, but I don't like people lying about our past because you can't change it. When these stones have been lined up and altered, you can't change it. It's too late. It's now a scheduled ancient monument. You can't move it back. Distorting the past is heinous. It's back to what I said earlier on. You go into the past it, and time travel and you change events of the past, that is wrong. We in this modern day and age, we don't need to time travel. We just alter monuments to the way we feel that they look like, which is very, very wrong. Lots of illustrations of this. The whole stone was obviously used for fertility rituals. Yeah, right. Maybe it was. And maybe even magic. And the pointed stones next to it being phallic in shape. Oh, come on. Let, let, get, give me a break. In ninth, Now, I, I've got the book, Mysterious Britain, um, published in 1984. It says... Many of these stones are supposed to be helpful in curing certain illnesses. Mm. And children were once passed through the men Nuttall stone when they were suffering from rickets. Stones with holes big enough to crawl through and with similar beliefs attached to them can be found all over the world. There may have there may once have been some benefits to be gained from such customs. Certain stones could hold powerful currents passing through the earth. Could not the whole serve as a focus for this power, which would pass into the body and give renewed vitality to and anyone climbing through the hole, right? I tell you what happens. There's a woman standing there and you can get an idea that these these stones are not huge right mm -hmm. i tell you what bloody happens when you're standing there as i did and these two women come up and the one woman says to the other one right oh crawl through that stone and i turn around and say oh but that means you're pregnant and the one woman said to the other woman she said you didn't tell me you were pregnant and they had a huge row and i had to walk off <laughs> honestly it's serious so in other words, this, that actually happened. They actually were having a slagging match and one of them just stormed off in the other direction. And I'm sure the other, I'm sure the woman called me a wanker. But anyway, the, the point is, it's, it's the actual power of seeing something like that that is very, very special. And that's, the, that's why I used that analogy and actually something that happened. Young people would come to the whole stone in order to consult the stone and oracle with regards to their future love life. And two pins would be placed like a cross on top of the stone. And then they would hopefully move in a certain way. Well, that's maybe possible. Now, if we think about the, or the Oracle of Delphi and we think that these stones are actually quite powerful, then they are quite powerful. When you think about it, when they were quarried, they had a certain magnetism and that may actually alter the, the, the pins anyway. And that makes perfect sense. This was interpreted to... Um, to a question put to the stone. So obviously, so obviously you need to you need to ask the stone a question, right? And hence the little pins would move. Um, it, it's also said, it's also said that um, young children with tuberculosis, rickets, and spinal problems uh, were passed through the whole stone three times while a childless woman would have to call through the hole nine times to receive a cure. After that, hopefully, they were cured. Well, yeah. Now, for me, for me, okay, right, you can have all of this. You can have all of these customs with the way it originally looked. You don't, you don't need to alter and bastardise the past 
for 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 a certain storyline, right? You don't need to do this. It can still have the same storyline, right? Yeah, you can still have the phallic thing, and you can still have the uh, vagina thing. And you can have all this stuff, right? But you shouldn't move it. You shouldn't tamper with the past. Remember these these are legends and myths, right? Whether they're true or not, the archaeology is true, and when you alter it, it's a distortion of history. Um, there is a reconstruction of how how um, how we believe this actually looked, and and this is actually based on stones. The ones that are, are outlined, that's actually based on stones that are actually under the surface. So it was in fact a stone circle at one time. Mm. And okay, okay. What what I'm going to do, right? What I'm going to do is ask you all. A, well, not all of you a question. Right. I'm, I'm going to ask Adam this question. Right. Okay, Adam. Right. You've got a choice. You can either align those three stones, right, and distort history, or you can you can find all the other stones in the ground, as indicated on there, and re-erect them, right? Or do none of the two. What would you do? It's a good question. Um, I think the first two, you're still you're tampering with it in in a way, um, but the third, you are leaving it as uh, as you found it, and it is is untouched. I don't know really the answer to that. Well, well, actually, that's exactly what we've done at Stonehenge, and um, right. you know, in, in many in many ways, thanks for that. In many ways, when we look at Stonehenge, we we um, there's there's images from Stonehenge, and it makes me think that Stonehenge was never ever completed either. Um, you know, some of those big um, lintels have fallen down on the ground, and they're intact. You know, that there's they they they're not broken. They they're not they're not touched. And you're thinking, well, if a if a ten ton stone falls on the ground, right, it's going to break, and there's no signs. And then archaeologists come along and they say, oh, that, that actually does belong on top of the, um, uh, it's one of the trilithal stones. Well, how can you be sure that that is actually the case? So I've, I've been to, I've been to the site um, of the Acropolis in, in, I, I'm getting this mixed up. Is it Lindos or Rhodes Town? I think it's Rhodes Town. Um, obviously on the island of Rhodes. Um, and when you go to the top of the Acropolis, that now um, there's all, all the all the capitals and the and the and the and the, the columns are on the ground. Uh, because in in the 1920s the Italians decided to rebuild the Acropolis using cast concrete and iron framework. Mm. And it started a crack crack a crack and explode. So they thought right we'll have to take the whole thing down. Um, and I think they're just leaving it down because I'm probably trying to get the, the, the stones back to the original positions on the ground, right? Um, now, I think that's probably the best thing to do. The Italians wanted to show you a picture of the past, like, um, and, and there we go, Henry said, leave stones alone. Um, like when we look at the site of Nossos, what we've done with Nossos is we've we've reconstructed it. Sir Arthur Evans reconstructed Nossos, and he did use concrete um, a metal framework. He, he used podcast concrete. Um, so, yeah, people have argued what Arthur Evans did was wrong at Nossos, but then again, he was trying to show you uh, what the past may have looked like, a bit like Jay Ward. But the difference between Jay Ward and Arthur Evans, Sir Arthur Evans, both British archaeologists, is that I think Arthur Evans wants you to believe that it did look like that. Um, there's, there's no doubt about it. This is how it looked. When Jay Ward is actually saying, not exactly sure it may have looked like this, it may not. And I think that's sensible. And we look at that, we see those three stones. And then we actually see that those two stones on the bottom side are part of the circle. Now these 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 three stones create create a fucking line. Mind the language. These 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 three stones create a line, which is completely wrong. That is the wrong impression of the past. That is not right. 
That's a distortion. That is wrong. No matter what way you look at it, that's not a reconstruction. That is wrong. That is a wrong look at the past. That's, there's nobody, nobody wanting to even allow us to see the past in any way than a lie. So it's, it's trying to grasp at understanding and then what the Neolithic is about. The Neolithic, the Neolithic should be um, very much about what we want, what, what, what we're seeing. Because before in the Mesolithic, there's very little archaeology in the Mesolithic. You've got caves and you've got evidence in caves and all the rest of it. But we don't really have the buildings and stuff. Um, but we've got we've got plans of Star Car. Um, where we've got um, plans of Blick Dean. We, we, we've got plans of um, uh, the, the site at Shannon Island. We, we, we've got all the, this evidence and nobody's going around saying, oh, we're going to alter it. We're going to change it. Right. But, but you know, I, I, I want to tell you something else that I actually told my gang um, this morning, uh, which is going to sh shock you all. And Richard knows what's coming. And um, and I'm just going to say it and we're just going to move on. But we're not going to do it yet. We can do it after this bit. So obviously looking at these, now I know we've seen these images and we're going to go on to Avery. So I think what, I, what I'd like to do next is I'd just like to tell you a little thing. Uh, they're building five solar farms in the Vale of Glamorgan. And the burial chamber at St. Lithens may actually have to be closed off permanently because they'll be building a solar panel farm directly in the field where the other burial chamber is at St. Lydon's. So get out and see it while you can. There is also a possible plan that they might move St. Lydon's burial chamber somewhere else so that members of the public can see it. If they do that, then the reason for the site being there in the first place is completely lost. So I thought I'd tell you that, that is actually what's on the cards. And it's likely that nothing can be done to stop it. Um, I don't want to talk about that. You can look that up yourself. But I will actually say, um, and you know, you know, um, little little old dot that used to come to our class in Bridgend. Yeah. She used to be very proud of that stone that they moved from the allotment. Oh, yeah? yes. Yes. It was... Well, um, I, 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 I never went... I, 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 okay, as much as I, I thought that was a good idea saving the stone, right? Why couldn't they have just left it where it was and build around it? And, and you know, they shouldn't have moved it because yeah. it's now, it's now completely where it's not meant to be. Yeah. It's yeah. completely out of context. It means nothing. It's, it's sort of somewhere where it's not meant to be. Yeah. And this is the thing, muck around with the past moving it you know yeah people have people have discussions with with native americans in, in the united states they say what we'll do little little, little lowly native americans you're actually scum of the earth right um you, what your thought your, your thoughts and ideas mean nothing but what we're going to do right we're going to move your burial ground over the road <laughs> yeah, because we're being nice right but it doesn't work like that the reason why the burial ground's there in the first place is because because it meant something by moving the burial ground somewhere else, mm. it loses its meaning. So don't talk down to us, um, American government. We were here before you, and our sites stay where they're meant to stay. Mm. Oh God, this is so friggin' energetic today. Right. Anyway, so um, and um, yeah, it, it would have been you know you would have understood what well. Yeah, you would have you would have understood it more. Like somebody has dug it up from, you know, they found it on an allotment, you know, and yes. um, it was it was just fallow ground, you know, and and uh, I suppose they could have left it there and you know put a fence around it. <laughs> no, yeah, but, but no, I don't think so. No, but the point the point I'm getting at is is that 
the past is a very delicate thing. It, it's not it's not infinite, right? It's finite. Um, and mm -hmm. we've only got the opportunities and the monuments that we have. Um, and by mucking around with them, we, we lose those opportunities to truly understand um, and to connect with the past. The, 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 those connections, you can't get them back. You know, you, 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 can't, um, you, you can't invent them. Now, this is a rather interesting image. Okay. This is the Avery Stone Circle. This is how the Avery Stone Circle looked in 1900. Exactly the same image. Look at all those stones on the left. I'm gonna go back to that again. How many stones are on the left there? There's two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. More than that, right? So um, before the work of Alexander Keeler, right, in 1900, those 10 stones on the left are however many there are right look at what look at what the landscape used to look like in 1900 can you count how many can you count four there's four and actually where you've got the where you've got the little gray there those are stones that have fallen so what 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 was decided? What was decided? What we're going to do, right? Uh, we're going to we're going to erect the the two stones, and we're going to put more stones in there. We're going to find them. And the problem is for me that is mucking with with the monument is completely mucking with the monument, right? There was another image that you just saw. It's actually this one. Now. This is a this is a rather interesting image. This is this is a reconstruction of the site by Alan Sorrell. Right, Alan Sorrell was one of those people who used to write, reconstruct sites. He, he, his work used to be published in English Heritage guidebooks, Scottish Heritage, um, Ministry of Works for Wales guidebooks. You know, he, he used to be everywhere. Right, but our, Alan Sorrell had no pretensions. He was saying the past may have looked like this. Those stones around the outside, there was ninety of them, maybe. Right. But if you go if you go back to the plan from 1900, that there's not that you know, I'm not good at mathematics, but I'm I'm struggling to count um, 20, right? So um, around the outside, and it's likely that there weren't many more than that, because it's always presumed when you see stones in a slight arc that there that there was a complete arc of stones. What we now understand even with Stonehenge, is that the Aubrey holes on the outside of the Stonehenge, right? Those Aubrey holes didn't, didn't really contain anything other than probably wooden totems. Right? And it's very likely that there were never 90 stones around the outside um, within sort of, ba ba basically what we've got, we've got um, these stones here, which are inside the ditch, which is then inside again, inside that bank. Right. So what we do believe is that they they may have dug holes, but they didn't put stones in them because each stone represented maybe a family or um, and not 90 families didn't move into the area. So the only ones that had stones were very likely the ones on, on the sort of um, on the western side. Some were broken up and whatever. But, but we know full well that lots of the holes on the eastern side show no signs that they ever had stones in at all. Even if they had been broken up, there was no stones in them. So again, that sort of, that sort of idea, that sort of projection of the past, understanding the past from, from a perspective. And for me to, for me to, it never looked like that, right? Okay, this is Alan Sorrell saying it may have looked like this, not saying it did. Right. What Kathleen Kenyon's done is said they've definitely stoned you. It definitely looked like this. But did it? But did it ever look like that? Um, and this is my worry with history, that that we that we believe what we are shown to be the real history, when in fact it's not at all. 
I'll give you I'll give you a good example of how we should present our past. At Lascaux in France, they started to realise in the 1960s, 70s that there, there were bacteria building up on some of the paintings. So they said, right, you tourists can bugger off. We're not coming in here anymore. So the tourist board said, well, hang on a minute, right? Well, what 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 are the tourists going to see? Oh, what we'll do, we'll 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 have another tunnel, right? Um, and they can see see a reconstructed version of what Lascaux looked like in the other tunnel. Apparently, it looks it looks so similar to the original Lascaux, right? You can't really work out the difference. So, in other words, what they've done, they've taken the history and they've said, right, we're not going to we're not going to touch it. We're going to leave it, right? We're going to leave it there. Right? We're going to leave it as it is. Um, but what we're going to do, we're going to give people another opportunity somewhere else to actually see it. And that's how it should be done. If you want to do it that way. I think there was talk at some point building another Stonehenge somewhere. So it would give Stonehenge a break. Uh, but that's never been done. But, you know, what is the past? Who is the past for? Why is the past there? Why, why do we want to see that? We're all, lots of people are interested in the past. You guys wouldn't be here now if you weren't interested in the past. The past is inevitably important to you guys, right? It's important to lots of people. But it's also important that you've got the right information. I'm, as you all know, right, I'm the first to admit I'm wrong, right? I, 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 I do say that I got that wrong. Oh, Christ, I, I should have read that wrong or um, I got that fact wrong. Thank you very much, right? But you can't keep hanging to the mast and saying that's that that is definitely the way it was. That's the way it should be, right? Maybe, and you don't have a choice then to undo the damage. And this is what happens when you F U C K with the past, right? This is what happens when you screw with the past. This is what that used to look like 60 years ago. That's what it looks like now. Can you see that all that bacteria is eating at the sandstone? It's eating into it. It's destroying the sandstone. Mm. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Right. Hang on. What, what, what the bloody hell is this thing on the roof here? Well, that concrete roof was never there. Well, all right, then what we got to do, we've got to put all the concrete roof on it because there's carved stones there. Well, I'm sorry, mate, right? The carved stones ain't going to last long if they've got bacteria eating away at them. That is absolute, that is absolute nonsense. It's absolutely manned. That is a scheduled and protected ancient monument. And because there's now a concrete roof on it, you can never, ever change that. It will all, it, you, you, because they've done that, that is actually now part of the monument. So you can't, in other words, undo that damage. If you, this is a site known as Barclodia de Agares, which basically means the um, giant apron, right? For what reasons? I don't know. I think somebody was smoking a weed when I gave it that thing, but that's where it is, right? So Barclodia de Agares. Um, Oh, sorry, that's one of my sheeps. Um, this is, so what they've done, now I can't work this out, what they've done, they've said that that, which is now looking like that, once in fact looked like that. And for me, I think we're going into fantasy. When you start, when you start to go into complete fantasy, and, and you try to look at the past and you try to sort of sort of ad lib it and invent it, we've then got a very serious problem because this is what the past used to look like. And now it looks like this. Do you know that there's, there's, a, there's a padlock on it and um, you, there's a gate and you get your padlock from the local shop and you've got to ask permission um, from the local shopkeeper to get the padlock. Did you actually go on this trip, Anne? What? Bloody hell, everybody's left me. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> did you actually go on this trip? Did you actually go in? You know, I'm sure you went on this one, did you? No. All right, this, this was that elusive North Wales trip that everyone dropped out and there was like six of us on the minibus, that one. 
so so anyway the the the, the point the point with this um, is that personally uh, this site is better protected like that or what you do you take copies of the carvings and then you make copies of those carvings right um, or what you could do I, I know that I know that this is um, uh, what you could do is you could take the stones away that have got carvings on um, and then replace them with another stone mm. but that would damage the integrity of the site whatever way you look at it this is not the answer that is not mm. the answer because when little children go there they think oh my god <coughs> Look at that, Daddy. This is what this is what it used to look like. Wow. And we're presuming that there was earth on the top of that. But there on the ground is gravel. Mm. So it was likely that there was if there it may have had gravel on it. Or then again, it may not have had gravel at all. The other thing, the other thing that actually gets me, folks, right, is when you put earth on a monument, right? The earth gets through all the holes um, and it, it, it's going to get in there. Lumpy. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's just not going to make any sense, right? So, oh, that, 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 that's, that's, that's one of my little sheep. That, that's, that's, my, that's my Meryl. Oh. There she is. Hello. Meryl. Hello. <laughs> anyway we, that's enough of that no that's one that i was treating so we've actually come to the, the end of the lecture now but what i'd like to do is is think mm -hmm. that the past it shell itself and I, when, when when we do questions I, I i want you to sort of come back and what you how you feel the past should be presented if you feel i'm wrong if you feel that um what i'm saying uh, by by the way um by the way wonderful henry you need to come back on again. Um, is is this right? You know, are, are they are they doing the past um, some justice? Right? Uh, you know, is is this the right thing to do, um, or should they have just left it like this? I think they should have because I, I've actually there's another site like this in the middle of Ang on the middle of Anglesey. I've seen it. It, it looks pretty good, um, and they've done a pretty good job with it, and they've left it as it is, and it looks good. Um, we, you know, yeah, yeah, I feel I feel that we're only just coming round, coming back around to that idea because I think you know the Americans and other places they've done such fantastic reconstructions. And yes, I think we we wanted that. You know, we wanted to go that way, but we realise now it's losing its authenticity and uh, yes, it does. what can we do? You know, what but, is the best in, thing to do? In, there's two points. In Scotland, what they do is they put glass cabinets over things and, and you can see them in China. They, 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 they build massive aircraft hangers over the things and they don't touch it. They dig it up and they don't touch it. Leave all the artefacts there. The one big problem that we've got, if, if we need to change any, any of this, we've got, to, we, we've got to go through a lot of process yeah. Um, Secretary of State permission and all the rest of it to actually undo this damage, uh, um, and then they could probably come back and say, actually, now that we've caused this to damage, right, we've now got to do something else to protect it. So it's it's like constantly mm -hmm. trying to re sort of inv invent the wheel and you know to try yeah. and sort of undo the damage or 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 sort of triage on a battlefield. Um, mm -hmm. This is the best that we've got now. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, what we're going to do, we're, we're going to call that a day now and we're going to see if there's any questions um, and go from there, really. So let's just sort of, um, oh, hang on. Oh, God, there, there is a way of getting off this. Oh, there it is. Stop screen sharing. Right. OK, then. Right. Let, let, let's let's just do it. Let's just do it. So, oh, and also next week, we're looking more. We're looking back at the antiquaries. Um, and the, the antiquaries and, and their barrow work next week. So that's what we're going to do. Um, Henri is on his way to um, um, look at questions and stuff. So, Anne, you're first. I, I just, um, you know, like what I just said, it, it's, it is a, a, a fascinating topic, really. What are we going to do 
in the future, what are we going to, how are we going to, you know, preserve the past? Or do, do we just stop here now and just build shelters over our monuments? Um, what? No. But pers personally, what I, sh what I personally my thought, and I and I, I thought this ev ev every moment when I was doing my postgraduate diploma in Leicester University, right? I thought this from day one that that we should have stopped uh, doing new archaeological excavations back in the beginning of the two thousands. Uh, our our museums are so inundated with artifacts now that we cannot process them. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you get a copy of current archaeology and, and you glaze over with the amount of stuff coming out of the ground. And archaeologists say, oh, this is a this is a wonderful time. And you're thinking, no, it's not. Mm -hmm. we're, we're not given time now to assess what's there. It's running too fast. Oh, well, you know, you and, and you're thinking, no. And, and things are going so fast that damage is being caused to archaeological sites. For example, the technique um, to excavate archaeological sites is to take off with an automatic digger the first foot of soil, damaging everything, and say, oh, well, we're, we're just doing this as quick as we can to see basically what's there. You know, what they've done in northern France, they, they've done exactly the same. They said, oh, right, what we're going to do, uh, we don't really need to see the tops of the trenches. We just need to see the bottom. So they, they scoop off the whole tops of the trenches. Or oh, at least we've got an alignment. No, that's not what the past is about. The past is about each of these lines and sort of trying to understand what's going on. We're rushing it and we're, we're, we're screwing it up. We're destroying our history. And what we should be doing is stopping and and assessing the damage that we've done and then we can move forward I, I tell you i tell you what there's a wonderful site called wayland smithy i mentioned it yesterday and the one the one good thing about wayland smithy is is that um it, it's near effington it, it's a site that's had some work to it but it's quite still raw um and it's quite a nice site and you can get a little idea of maybe what these sites were like and it's a little bit more in the rule than the likes of Tinkins would and completely different from the, the fantasy site of Bacla the other um, Garris. Mm. Oh, so does that answer your thing, Anne? Yes, thanks. Yeah, just to be it, continued. <laughs> to be continued. Right. Adrian, Henry, um, get, get as you can tell, Adrian, these classes on a Tuesday, uh, on a Wednesday, don't go on for another three hours. So uh, that's fine. So Adrian, um, if you want to put your mic mic on or whatever henry what would you like to say oh i thought you were oh. talking about adrian adam oh yeah it's the same difference adrian adam you know it's <laughs> yian, yian's yeah. adam right henry what would you like to say my french friend uh the, the bit that i managed to see very good <laughs> all right okay the, the, the passionate bit that's good that's good that's good okay okay um, and, and by the way, Adam, for, for the sake of argument, Henry's um, lost his French accent. So don't worry about it. He's been in Ireland for too long. Uh, right. Uh, right, Goff, anything you'd like to say, darling? Well, I think, I'm going back to, there. I think you ought to catch you before like, you fall off your soapbox. But um, I think you're being a bit hard on your fellow archaeologists because yeah. they're only trying to, trying to... They're only trying to... Um, uh, present uh, a more uh, a, a kind of way of showing it to people. They're misguided, probably, but I think you're being a bit hard on them. And um, I, I, that's what I feel. I think mean, they're just trying their best to make it more acceptable and more interesting for people. But in the process, of course, they're messing it up, which is a shame. But it's um, you're very cynical. Yeah, yes. Okay, okay. No, that's fine. Okay, I can go with that. I can go with that criticism. And taken on board, Goff. I can go with that. Goff, you know I'll take anything from you. Take it like a man. I'll take it, yeah. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, I get I get where you're coming from, and I do agree with you, but so you're gonna be in a bit tough on them. Um okay. Okay, no, no, I, 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 I there's nothing wrong with reeling my neck in occasionally. I I can take that one. Okay, I can take that one. Um Adam, is there anything you would like to say? We can't get your mic on. So, oh. um, so that um, site on Anglesey, uh, there's Bring Heshley V on Anglesey as well. Is that, does that have a similar kind of treatment? Um, uh, uh, right, so you've got Bring Heshley V, which is a completely different site. Um, that yeah, has had, yeah, yeah. yeah that, that, that has had a... Um, 
the the thing is with uh, Brincathley D, there, there is a carved stone there that was actually moved and it's in the museum and the carved stone that they replaced it with, you can't even see that it was a carved stone at, now. Um, there has been some alteration with Brincathley D, but nothing on the level of Barcode de Garros. Um, but yeah, other than that, I think um, in terms of re representation, you know, of sites, it, it just seems like, as you said, uh, there's not much care, there's not much um, intention to be sympathetic to the um, understandings of the meanings of those stones. So I think it's a, a revision of that kind of ethic that, that they need to go forward from that. Yeah. So what we're saying, we're talking about revisionist archaeology in a, in a way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what, I, that's what I think. Good. Anything else you'd like to say, Adam? Um, other than that, no, thank you very much for the impassioned education. <laughs> okay, well, yeah. well, don't go off yet because we've still got Richard and yeah. then we'll call it a night. So, cool. Richard, anything yeah. you'd like to say, darling? Oh, no, really interesting. I get what you, where you're going to, you know, with these where the interpretation of what something looked like 6,000 years ago. And it leads a lot more looking into and just piling a stack of earth on top and saying that's probably how it looked. Yeah, mm. there's one good thing. When you look at Silbury Mound, right, other than the holes dotted through it, it pretty looked much much like that for thousands of years. So that, that we, can, we, can, we can be happy with that one. Yeah. Um, we can be happy with that one. So, uh, anything else you'd like to say, Richard, before we 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 head off into the into the astroturf? No, I'm I'm happy enough. I just built my cup of tea over the floor. Oh. Right, okay, that's enough. Right, okay then. So, anything? Finally, Henry, Adam, um, Goff, Richard, and anything else you want to say before we finish? We know what we're doing next week. We're doing Barrow Diggers Part Three next week. Uh, don't worry, it, it it'll um. Lots more images and, and a little bit less cynicism, Goff. All right. One, one question for you, Oh, Carl. one question, Goff. Goff, give it to us. Yeah. Housekeeping question. So um, uh, my, my annual subs are due next month. And how much is it this year? Uh, we, we haven't put, it's £32. Our, our yearly subs haven't gone up. Oh, well, I have since the £26 I paid five years ago. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Was it yeah. twenty six pounds? Oh God! Yeah. You gave me a discount. <laughs> yeah, it was twenty twenty four when I started. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, but, 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 for you. I know. I, 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 th I think we've actually done quite well I because it was um, it, it it was it was thirty pounds in two thousand and twenty, and um, and it's only got up two pounds, so that's fine. No, okay. So, thank you. I thought it was Thanks. 10 pounds. <laughs> okay. Oh, shut up. Anyway, Goff, I really appreciate your time. So I'm going to okay. say goodnight to Goff, Richard, Anne, Henry, and Adam. And if anyone wants a little jar at the end, that's fine. I'll see you all next week. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Oh right, okay, okay. So, so oh, oh, I wonder, are we actually still on YouTube? I did come off it because I didn't realise I was going to get two of you for the price of one. All oh, right, you, you you don't approve having two of me for the price of one, then? Uh, no, not not in both ears. All oh, right, there, 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 there's um oh, the live chat. It was why are there only two people here? I don't know who that is. <laughs> it's not me. What's somebody, that? somebody called. Oh, that, that that's that's probably Bill in it. <laughs> no, it's somebody called Veen. Oh well. Veen. Anyway, I'll let you go. Yeah. Uh, all right then. Okay, Henry. Henry and and Play no, ball no, next no, week. What's that? Let's hope the internet plays ball next week. Oh, it's playing ball now. That's the problem, isn't it? Yeah. Right. Okay. Enjoy yourself. Oh, yeah, I've got to go and sort my floor out. All right, go <laughs> sort your floor out. And a partridge in a pear tree. Anyway, see you, Anne. See you, anyway.
anyway thanks everybody for watching i'm going to look at the chat box as i usually do house meeting chat close send to everyone nothing in the chat box and your marks get set close 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 and there we go live we're coming off live thank you very much don't forget to like and subscribe and join thank you goodbye and veen there was only one of you